Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. These are the ingredients for the easiest pound cake ever with a crispy, crunchy top that I thought I would share with you so that you can make for your family. Um, we're having it today after we um, have our um, Thanksgiving dinner for Easter. We're going to have turkey and dressing, and this is going to be our dessert. So, want to start off with two sticks of butter at room temperature. Um, if you cannot get these at room temperature, you can always um, microwave for 10 seconds each. It'll get soft enough for the recipe to work. The next thing you're going to add is um, one stick of Crisco. It is a butter flavor um, Crisco stick that is going to make the cake very moist and delicious. Then I'm gonna cream this together. If you look at it here, you don't go over one or two on your mixer and you just let it go nice and slow. This is gonna be a long video, so we're gonna make sure that it's thorough. I'm gonna add three cups of sugar in. This is all gonna to cream together. Just go nice and slow. Maybe go up to two at the highest, but nothing over two. You want to blend the first three ingredients, the butter, the Crisco stick, and the sugar really well before you add anything dry or any other wet ingredients. Just make sure that you get all the lumps out. cake. You can already see that it's gotten very well blended. I'm just going to slow it down, take the edges off the side. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to scrape everything to the center. And I'm going to push everything out here. And I'm going to cream it a little bit longer. Then I'm going to start adding the eggs and the cake flour and the milk and everything else. But see how this is still chunky with the, the butter, Crisco? I'm gonna make sure that that gets really well blended. The next thing you add is the eggs. You have five eggs in this recipe. And if you don't have warm room temperature eggs, then you just put them in a bowl like this and then you just let them sit and they will eventually cool down to room temperature and it'll just take the chill off of them. You're gonna wanna add the eggs in one at a time, which is kind of easier to do once they're cracked and in a bowl as opposed to cracking them over the batter. It little, makes it a little bit harder when you, when you get a little bit of egg shell in. So again, that consistency is what you want, that nice creamy consistency. You wanna try to get everything out of the um, blender that you can. Get it all back to the middle. It's ready for the other items now. It's just going to continue to get creamier and creamier and you're going to be able to smell pound cake as soon as it gets blended. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is the eggs. I'm going to lock my... Okay, try to do one at a time. There's your first one. You can already tell how creamier it's going to make it. And I'm still only on the stir setting, which is one. The second one's going in. Here's our third one. Oop, three and four went together. I got a little bit on my mixing. I'm gonna clean up as I go. I could watch this all day. It's kind of mesmerizing. All right, I'm gonna stop, lift, get everything to the center. This is a recipe that I got 100 years ago from the strangest place. I was at Harris Teeter and I was looking for a recipe 
on a pound of sugar or flour. You know how they have kind of the best recipes on the actual products. And the guy that was working there in the dairy area said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking for a pound cake recipe. And he said, well, you need to talk to my wife. She makes the best pound cakes ever. And so he gave me this recipe and he said that she made it for the doctor's office where she worked and she made them for the doctor to give away as Christmas presents. And um, ever since then I've been making this recipe. So once you get your eggs blended, you just keep going low and slow. That's the hardest part is it's very time consuming because you want it to be right. And you want it to be blended correctly. And you can see it's just coming together really well. I mean, what can go wrong with sugar and butter in a Crisco bar? All right, so now I'm gonna add the flour. This flour is three cups of cake flour, and this is very specific. You wanna make sure you get the Swan's cake flour. It's important because it, it just, it cooks differently. And you wanna add it in slowly. Let it catch up. Again, I'm only on two right now. Once the cake flour goes in, you're gonna add baking powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder, a one and a fourth cup of milk, and a half a teaspoon, uh, one and a half teaspoon of vanilla. So, this is doing really well. Neatness doesn't count, just get it in there. Just see how much um, it's blending on its own, which I love. I love this mixer. All right, you're gonna add your fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder. And now the vanilla. You wanna get a good vanilla. If you can get it without it being imitation, that would be ideal, but vanilla works both ways no matter what it is. Same flavor, just better quality, it tastes better. All right, so now you're gonna scrape the sides. You're really not doing any of the work. You're just pushing buttons, so it just gets creamier and creamier. Now I'm going to add the milk. So this is 1%. That's what Josh drinks, so we're having um, one and a fourth cup milk added now. And I like to do it room temperature as well, nice and slow. And at first it looks really watery, but it will thicken up and blend perfectly. You can use whole milk, you can use skim milk, I don't think it really matters. You just add, I've never tasted a difference in the percent of milk that I've used. So right now you can smell, this is amazing already. It's well blended, there's no lumps. I'm gonna scrape the bottom. All right, so it's important that you use a um, tube pan I'm just gonna let this continue. The tube pan here that I have, it's two pieces. You want to spray the inside and the out with Baker's Joy. Or you can also do butter and flour if you want. Um, Baker's Joy just makes it super easy. All right, so I'm gonna cook this at 325 for one hour and about 40 minutes. Hopefully um, you have the time for that at some point. Again, it's a slow, uh, low and slow process. Once it gets out of the oven, um, for that after that hour and 40 minutes, you're gonna see it have a crispy, crunchy brown top. You don't use a glaze, you don't use anything. It's perfect just the way it is. Let it cool for about 10 to 15 minutes and you're good to go. So I'll post a picture when I'm done and I'm getting ready to take this from the mixer to the tube pan and get it baking so we can get started with that and then start our turkey. Happy Easter, everybody.